For centuries, needle and thread have been to sewing and quilting what a cutting board and knife are to cooking. They're indispensable tools. For this series, we're going to take the thread out of the machine sewing equation while working with more needles to create works of art. Please welcome Isabella Hoffman, who is a fiber artist and machine felting expert. She does most of her innovative work using a felting machine. Isabella, welcome to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you so very much for having me and giving me the opportunity to show our viewers how I do my artwork and my techniques. As an example, my Cardinal Delight Table Runner uses wool fabric for the background and appliques and I'll show our viewers how to mesh all the pieces together using a felting machine and then embellishments by hand to complete the artwork. Machine needle felting, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. We're going to start with working with machine needle felting by talking about fabric. And Isabella, your fabric choices are lovely Thank in you. all of your work, as our viewers will soon see. And much of the fabric that you work with is wool. Wool fabrics, yes. And some and hand dyed felt. fabrics as well as fabric by the yard or even felt. Yes. And your hand dyed fabrics, which we'll be working with a little bit later in the series, have lots of life into them. Yes. Um, I love them specifically because uh, they come as modeled or uh, very um, gently dyed mm -hmm. with a different. Um, stretched, the colors are stretched out further and that gives me uh, different types of backgrounds that I can use. And the wool dyed f fabric is lush, thick yes. and wonderful yes. to work with. You may have yardage at home or would repurpose some fabrics, a, a suit jacket let's say or men's pants and yardage is great. It's wonderful because these give you different textures and more options when you combine all of these together. Then the third option that we have to choose from is the wool felt. Yes, wool felt is a little bit different than um, the fabric wool because um, fabric wool is woven and so you're gonna have to work a little bit harder on it than if you're using wool felt. Wool felt is just literally just mashed together and uh, you get literally everything through from one side to the other very fast. This is a fast process though. Extremely fast, regardless. yes. Regardless, and in the book that accompanies today's program, you'll get pattern outlines or appliques for this technique, and Isabella, you have photocopied these onto freezer paper. Yes, and the reason I do that, because I'm a bit lazy, so I would like <laughs> to um, print it because it's much faster, and then you can just rough cut it out and uh, iron it onto your wool uh, fabrics, the choice of the fabrics that you're using, or wool felts. Or you could use a light table and trace. Light table and trace it, whatever's more comfortable. And then Isabella has rough cut the designs so that they are allowing about a fourth of an inch seam allowances and then you just press the freezer paper right to the fabric. Mm -hmm. And which makes it so convenient then to cut out the exacting shape. That's right. Then for positioning, we have the layer beneath that you have already positioned and you have, let's put the cardinal together. We remove the paper backing. And just peel it off and save it because you can use those again. And in this case I lay it um, not on top of the branch mm -hmm. but above the branch and there is a, a reason for this and we're going to come to that right here. I like to uh, add these two pieces together so that I have the natural flow of it and then I go ahead after we had cut them all out and laid them and I trace or I actually mark the areas. Let me just turn it a little bit so I have to cut a little bit less. We don't want to have overlap of fabric in, in short otherwise it will not look right in the finished design. Because we're turning this mm -hmm. and we're working at the end on the other side, you would see these different layers. So we'll trim this and then after pinning into place, 
will be ready to do the felting or the punching. Earlier in the program, I mentioned that we weren't going to be working with thread when working with the machine, yet we have something that's very sewn and the fabrics are melded together, meshed together by the use of barbed needles. This beautiful design was made possible by just punching the needles through the fabrics. Now there are several ways, of, two ways I should say, of working with this, the slow way and then the fast way. But before I show you both of these techniques, I just want to show you how we trim the appliques. Isabella made some markings where the branches and the star came together and we have those fabrics butted together. I have the, my little sample placed on a brush that's calibrated to meet the length of the barb needles of the hand felting tool and can just felt the layers together and you'll soon see that as I pull this up how the fibers come through the area. But if you're working on a large project, this is great for basting things down. But Isabella, you have all your appliques positioned. I have it positioned, and a nice part about doing machine felling, you don't have to thread a needle, and it's very fast. So here I'd like to show the, cust uh, the students uh, to lay out everything like they would be ready to felt uh -huh. the whole thing, except uh, and that gives you the flow. And then what I do is just tell them, take away the, uh, the small parts so you don't have all these pins in there. So I'm going to take these things out. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, tack. I call this tacking uh, because you can lift up the pieces um, when you don't like them where they're positioned. So I'm going to go ahead and just punch. It helps to turn the light on. And go ahead and punch. And tacking, I mean, you just walk it like you're walking down the street. That's it, pretty much. There are 12 needles in this machine. And 12, and that's a lot of needles. And I don't want you to worry. If um, you're going over the edges, that's perfectly okay. Uh, it will add a little bit of a highlight to it, and it does change the texture, but it does heal. When you're coming to the area where the pieces join, you want to make sure that you take the needles out because they will break your felting needles on the machine. You might want to take the pieces and kind of just slightly mm -hmm. push them together so to make sure you have no gaps in here. And I would like to show you with. Um, you position these pieces and you need to lift them up again because you don't like where you are. You can see mm -hmm. where the fiber meshed together with sure. the wool, but you don't have a lot of damage and you can continue doing this. So um, if you, you want to, in this particular piece, we want to make sure that we machine felting the whole thing down nice and solid if you like the position. Um, and you want to watch out that you're not um, creating a hole because this works very fast. A best way to do it is to do a small circle of motions, slow, hit the pedal to the metal, because <laughs> you do want to have the speed. Sure. And don't be afraid of it. And the circle apart will give you a very nice, even look. And just keep going. And periodically, you want to take and look at the back so that you can see how the fibers all come out. And you can tell yes. where the area still needs it. So it's very, very fast. You're right to the point. Uh, the reactions are just incredible. And um, I can see I'm a little lifted up here, but I could uh, sure. lift this area up and just gently reposition it. I'm a little bit too far, so I'm gonna... Taking out a seam is much easier than when you have thread. Oh yeah. <laughs> you don't need your long-term friend, uh, the seams, seam, ripper. seam ripper anymore, <laughs> that's right. And that's why the, t um, the um, tacking is, is a really cool um, technique not to worry about it. Now, this next piece that Isabel is going to show you has been felted almost the entire thing. And if you want to show our viewers how the fabric colors kind of change as they meld through, and from the that, that's the punch side of the fabric, then the opposite side of the fabric. I'd like to show two different things because sure. that really, really shows you on here. You can see these pieces have not been punched yet. Mm -hmm. And in here we went ahead and punched it. And it does change the texture of the fabric and uh, because all the fuzzy part goes to the other side. It also changes the color. And that is a great opportunity to um, later on shade if that's what you're going to do. And this is the back side of it. 
and you've used the back side as the side of preference. Right, and because of lack of terminology, we call this the punch side because the area mm -hmm. that the machine punches on, and then this would be the press side because the fiber is being pressed through. So here's another close-up look of the press side of the fabric, and you'll notice that Isabella has added some cruel work, some hand stitches, French knots, chain stitches, some metallic thread around the star to highlight it, veins within the leaves. And Isabel, you can just do this by hand. You, you could do this by hand. If you're comfortable, you could do it with the machine. If you're uncomfortable um, uh, 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 embroidering the, the berries, mm -hmm. you could simply uh, cut out a, a round a circle and then punch that down. From the other side, you could punch mm -hmm. this instead of putting it on. The we have a sample right here. Fabric. There's so, a sample right here. So on this side, you can see the option, if you, the option that you have for the berry. And it, it's, it's a lovely, soft, Very gentle, gentle. Yes. and it's a great place for people to start. Excellent place because you can take other pieces and uh, appliques that you have found in, in your books and uh -huh. use those, um, it's endless. So the key is working with a felting machine, a hand tool, and great fabrics. Whenever I see pansies, I think of my grandmother, Francisca Johanna. She had the most wonderful gardens filled with pansies and roses as well as vegetables. My grandmother allowed my brother and me to play in her garden shed and it was the perfect garden shed. Beautiful flowers like these remind me of wonderful memories. I dedicate this piece to my Oma and other grandmothers the world, the world over. This design is just charming, and pansies can be of multiple colors. And they come in so many different styles and color combinations. It's, it's incredible. And you have used a beautiful combination with the blues and uh, obviously white with the center. And this time, the design is featured from the punch side. Correct. Not from the press side. Not from the press side. Everything is done on that side right here. And the color combinations that you've chosen for the pansy are, some of the samples are here in beautiful hand dyed wool fabrics. And as we peel back, you can see the processes that Isabella has used. Correct. And here are all the pieces, lots of pieces for that pansy. A little bit more, and it's a little bit trickier because you think they just kind of, you have to think of these pieces like a puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. You just dissect it and you're putting them back together. And after tracing and cutting out the pieces, then you're going to position. And you do not want to have a lot of overlay because of the needles. Because it, it takes the stress away from the needles. And in, in this particular piece right here, you actually, in some areas, you have a little space in here mm -hmm. because other pieces fit in. So you can possibly see that in this section, Isabella has already felted the middle section, but we'll be adding these outer sections and then some of the beautiful vines and shading techniques. The shading technique, is, it's lots of fun. It's like coloring and being in fourth grade. <laughs> and it gives it so much depth. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go to the machine and do some more punching. Isabella is going to continue with the felting process of the pansy and you're going to add the dark areas of the leaves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me show you how I went about this. Uh, one of the things you want to watch out for is laying these points. So like the puzzle piece like we talked earlier, and now I'm just placing these right back on it. Snug them together. Snug them together. And the best way to do this, the machines like to kind of pull away a little bit, just kind of um, push it together a little bit. There we go. It's a little bit awkward because I'm coming. Sure. I mean, it's incredible how fast the machines actually felt. Now, if you see that you have a little spot right here that you that you missed, I'm not going to worry about that because I can fill it in with the marker later on. So it's very, very forgiving. Okay, there we go. And the wool fabric just loves to be felted. Yes. Uh, and because you have so much fiber, I like the wool fabric really well, and including the uh, wool felts. And I can maybe add this little piece in here because it's so fast. And what's, what I found is interesting that you don't have a bobbin thread or any threads to cut, so, so you can just move You want to be lazy, that's the tool. <laughs> this is absolutely great. And children love this because it's like an instant um, reaction, and they don't have to sit there and worry about I can't sew or uh -huh. threading, and it's very safe for children too. 
And the next step to have the realism that comes to these designs that Isabella has added is the shading. The yellow fabric and the pansy, the purple, have additional emphasis and dimension because of working with fabric pens. So let me show you how I go about this. This is really the fun part. This is the aha moment for most people. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is right. It's really fun. Uh, when you're having um, the pants yet, I start out usually with the lightest colors. Actually, in here, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to uh, No, we're going to add a little bit of blue to it just to kind of do something different. Uh, in my book, I have the different types of markers that I'm using. You need, um, let me just see if I come from this side so you can see better. You need very, very little. These are very potent colors. Um, these markers also have a blender, which is a clear liquid, and they're alcohol-based. Um, you can just wipe this out, if you can see this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work this out a bit faster because I'm right-handed. And not only does it change the hue of the color, but you can stretch it out. And the nice part about these markers, too, with especially the blender, that really is the key thing, um, if you make a mistake and you hold it on long enough, it'll eat the color and you can start over. So, I mean, how safe can you be? And it takes really the fear out. So by adding just a little bit of blue in here, mm -hmm. and we can do a little bit more, just so that you can see these markers have two different types of tips. I'm going to just add a little bit. This is a little bit of blue, different blue. But this will really give you a really good idea. Yes. And kind of work it a little bit. So, so far we've mesh fibers, we've added fabric paints or pens to them. Uh, when, you, when you mesh the fibers together, you lose color. And so now we're adding the color back to it and we're adding what we like, which is yeah. much more fun. So by having this right here, I'm going to be adding a little bit of uh, um, some of these center lines that these pansies have. And I used a fine, pit, uh, fine tip of the marker and all you have to do is just do these little lines. These you can later on embroider. Mm -hmm. or not, if you don't know how to embroider it, you will still have a very nice piece that is almost finished. There we go. And for fun, we can even add a little bit of yellow on the bottom right here. Let's just do this just mm -hmm. for fun. That really adds a lot of depth. And it changes the entire look. So you can customize your own pansy, so to speak. While Isabella is finishing doing the shading, I'm going to show you another design that she's been working on. She has pansies of many colors. You can see the highlight of the hand embroidery over the lines that she's drawn, the beautiful shading around the edges, and then the creation of vines. Some have been embroidered and some just drawn in to give depth and dimension. And then there are star flowers that have been added. And the star flower petal tips have not been felted into place. And Isabella, you have the center felted, and then you've added some French knots, but you gave a little extra cut to uh, those yes, pieces. Yes, let me show you a little trick here, which is really a nice little thing. When you trace the flowers out and you iron them on the material, you cut them out, and here's a little thing. In order to, for them to stand up a little bit more, if you cut a little V in the corners, let's just take this piece off here. You can see it right here really well. Let's do a couple more. You can see when you're punching it, it, it makes them stand up. And I have one to punch right here, just with the hand felting tool, because you don't want to get the whole flower punched down. And so you can just leave the center sections in place. And with that, I'm again going to show you the beautiful finished table topper, almost pansies. And what a masterpiece of felted fabric. Now here are some other showcases of Isabella's work, starting with a snowflake. Now Isabella, this side of the snowflake is the punch side. The punch side and you can, it really becomes reversible, it's whatever side that you like best. So then here's the reverse side of it and you can see that now the look is a little bit different. You have, a, you can see that you have all the fiber on one side mm -hmm. rather than any kind of a weaving and, uh, and again it, it, it's, it, most students can't decide which side that they like best. It really is what you like. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful combination. 
And then as you're felting, you can progress. And this cardinal on the apple blossom is in the earlier stages. Uh, yes, and then the apple blossom, I want to show you that if you don't know how to draw, you're a little bit fr uh, frightened about it, uh, you, have to, you still have a nice finished piece. Uh, if you want to go a step further, you can go ahead and draw little tiny branches into it, and then you can go ahead and embroider these by hand. Every element that you add adds another piece of life to these projects, and that is what makes it lifelike. So you can see there's a lot of versatility in working with this, learning to punch from the right side, from the underneath side. Either way, a work of art. I'm always amazed at the source of inspiration. It's not uncommon for fiber artists to be motivated by landscapes and flowers. Today's Nancy's Corner guest has a totally unique inspiration bent, including aerial photographs, satellite imagery, and maps. I'd like you to meet Leah Evans, a textile artist who interprets her inspiration with embroidery, applique, and fabrics. Leah, many people who are guests on Sewing with Nancy have textile or clothing background, and you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I studied textile design at the University of Kansas and um, have been working on my maps and microbes since. Now your inspiration, as we mentioned, comes from aerial views and satellite views and this is a work in process, mm -hmm. progress, that beautiful silk fabric and tell me your inspiration. That is from a, a sketch that I did while flying. Um, this piece was probably, or the, the scene was probably a rural exchange, mm -hmm. highway exchange. And these I added not from the scene, but just from my imagination. They could represent um, water treatment. Sure. Very, um, very interesting and abstract, but you just engaging. Well, very, very nice. And then this next piece, when I first saw it, reminded me of crop circles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do have some pieces based on irrigation circles, but these are more... Um, Oh, cul-de-sacs. <laughs> yeah, based and, on uh, cul-de-sacs mm -hmm. in a development area. Uh, fun. And you have turned under applique. Mm -hmm. It's my first attempt at traditional reverse applique. Um, I usually do it on the machine and have mm -hmm. raw edges. We'll see that in mm -hmm. just a few minutes. And then next we're going to see an inspiration that came from a map. Mm -hmm. And everyone who saw this first of all said, an airport. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's actually based on a real place, not all of them are, but it's the airport in Mankato. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And a lovely combination of fabrics, and I like your hand stitching that you've done. Mm -hmm. Running stitches that add a nice, maybe this is to imply building mm -hmm. or an area, very, very interesting. Yeah. Now these were some three pieces that weren't quite finished yet, as you can see, but now we're going to get into some pieces that have all the batting and all the layers. And this is a different type of applique. Mm -hmm. This is done on the machine. I do, I hand baste the layers together and then uh, plot out where I'm going to stitch and then stitch and cut away. And this inspiration, give us a insight into that. Uh, I was just looking at a lot of images of deltas and mm -hmm. um, this system of breaking up land, which is called arpents. Um, and this is loosely based on a real place in Louisiana, but I took a little creative liberty with it. Creative liberty, creative license, we mm -hmm. all like that, <laughs> that aspect of it. Now when I was noticing, looking at these, I noticed the beautiful binding techniques, itty mm -hmm. bitty, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and also the irregular border. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Thank you. adds a, a nice dimension to this. And then our last piece we're going to look at has some high contrast in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the orange fabric along with a lot of the greens in the last piece I hand dyed. Um, and then the nice contrast of the hand stitching, those are all French knots that I did by hand. Um, and where's the inspiration from this? This piece, I think I was also looking at a map of Minnesota, but I kind of morphed a body of water into a little bit more interesting of a shape. And uh, I really like the dots that represented maybe kind of a shallower area in the water or shoal. So we have hand embroidery, we mm -hmm. have machine applique, 
hand quilting, we have zigzag stitching, you have a lot of combination mm -hmm. of, of dimension, of texture, beautiful hand dyed fabrics, mm -hmm. inspiring. Yeah, it's, it's inspiring for me too. I like to see what, a, what kind of combinations I can come up with. Well, Leah, thank you for sharing this with us. It is uh, a work of art that I've never seen before, and it, what great appreciation, and keep up this great work. Well, thank you. Thank you for being <laughs> our guest. And thank you for watching Sewing with Nancy, and we'll be back next time with more machine felting with Isabella Hoffman. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Isabella Hoffman has written a fully illustrated book entitled Machine Needle Felting that serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $24.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2409. Order item number IHMNF, Machine Needle Felting, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.